All right, everybody, welcome to Monday Morning Quarters Back. My name is Ultra David. This is the show where we analyze matches that happened over the past weekend here on Monday Morning, which it totally again is. Today, we're going to be looking at Dan, Street Fighter V Dan, a character that came out earlier this year and changes a lot of the rules about how things work in pressure in Street Fighter V. Got very unique tools. Some people are familiar with them, others are not. And I think it's going to be very interesting to take a look at how this character works and what people are doing against him. With that in mind, let's go to our Street Fighter V expert, Ultra David, up in the press box. All right, nice job, cameraman. That looked like a pretty smooth transition there. Thanks a lot, David, on the field for tossing it up here. That's right, we're going to be looking at Street Fighter V Dan. He is, as you said, a character that gets to break some rules. With his V-Skill 2, he can cancel buttons into other buttons or into special moves in ways that create traps that are different from everybody else. He effectively has reverse beat, if you're familiar with some other types of games. That is to say, he can go from like a heavy button into a light button. He could do the opposite if he wants. He can mix and match all sorts of different stuff. And that gives his pressure a big difference compared to everybody else's. Now, I'm not a Dan player specifically, but I do really enjoy the character, and I have done a lot of research in terms of how things go for him. So when we look at these matches, we're going to talk about like which frame traps will blow up which buttons. It's going to be a lot of fun to look at. He gets to develop some kind of frame traps that are just a little unique in the context of Street Fighter V. We're going to take a look at two matches here. One is Hai Gadoken, who is a super, super good Dan player. Uh, he has had, I mean, a lot of success in CFN. And his opponent will be Dogra, playing Dalsim. I don't know why, but that's what we're going to watch. And this is going to be a match where Dogra doesn't really super know what Dan does. We're also going to take a look at Haikadoken, the same player, versus Ryusei, who does know what Dan does. And what you, you can do versus a V-Skill 2 Dan. Okay, let's hop into this. Production, send it over. Quite a shot to come in on right there. I just wanted to say that we got this footage ripped from Maniaco Games' YouTube channel. Uh, he uploads a lot of stuff. If you're somebody who likes Street Fighter V and you want to see a bunch of matchups of people just playing on the internet in ways that like they didn't expect anybody else to see. So it's not always the topest quality. They're not always trying the hardest, but there's tons of different matches that you get to see. Weird matchups, people playing different characters. Uh, check it out. There are lots of other uploaders in that same way. So, okay, let's get it started. Again, what we tend to do is watch through the first round. And then if there's anything interesting, we'll go back and check it out in post. So again, Dogra is playing Dalsum. This is not his main. He's one of the best Bison players in the world. But uh, I, I don't know, probably just playing Dalsum to like learn how the character works is my guess. But that means that we get to take a look at him in a character matchup that I don't know if he ever has played before, which is uh, Dan. Again, Hi Gadoken, a.k.a. Moruto. So already a lot to talk about, right? Already a lot of him canceling stuff into other stuff, finding plus frames in unusual ways. Again here, that EX Dan kick is plus. Walk in right forward. His sweep puts him at a range that... You know, characters in general can punish, but not with stuff that they can punish other sweeps with all the time. Oh, look at this. Just a lot of free formery. A lot of free formery. Too much to even say as we're watching. We'll go back and take a look. All right. Oh, he chooses not to go for the DP. He just would rather get the pressure, I suppose. Cool. Big plus frames. Just constant plus frames. Okay, cool. What in the world? Did we just see? Uh, let's briefly take a look at a document that I have prepared. Boop. Here is the list of science. This file is called SF5 Science, Dan. And here's the science, okay? So the science is that in SF5, uh, for SF5 Dan, what do we got here? Um, as you can see, the left column is button that he begins with. The second column is the second the thing that he cancels into, and that's those are the ones that beat three frame buttons. The one on the right is things that he cancels into that beat four frame buttons. So this is a lot. There's a lot of stuff going on here. But in conclusion, you know, realize that a lot of the buttons that he's canceling into are going to be plus. You know, things like uh, crouching, 
light kick plus things like a uh, stand jab or crouching jab plus crouching medium punch is plus uh, the lucky godoken is plus when you do max range light kick dan kick or ex dan kick you're plus the point is a lot of this stuff is plus and you're kind of mixing and matching because it's kind of hard to tell as the opponent at any one time like what in the world is happening um so let's go back and just kind of watch this through Right, so like right away, right? Fierce into crouching light kick. Now let's go back to the dock. Whoop. Stand fierce. Frame traps into stand fierce. Stand fierce into light kick is actually a true block string. True block string right there. Um, as you see, that builds some V meter for himself. Note, however, that it's also building V meter for the opponent. Right, again. Okay, so this, this specific range is something we'll see a lot. He's trying trying to find this spot constantly. Fierce from like its maximum range into light Dan kick. This is certainly safe, um, if not plus. It's likely that it's plus. Hard to tell exactly right there, but that range is typically where it becomes plus on block. And again, to go back to the thing, that is plus four at maximum. Um, so he then goes into Dan's four frame light punch, which means that he's, um, you know, it's probably not a tight block string there, but it's at least a plus range for him. Right, so just keep that in mind, right? The back dash, smartly done by Dogra to escape. This talk about, let's talk about this range as well, and then we'll just fast forward to the next round. So at kind of like far, but not maximum range, stand roundhouse. As you saw, stand roundhouse kind of moves you forward. And then V skill two into crouching medium punch. And then EX, Dan kick. Most likely this is plus on block here. This is typically plus on block range. So this is a specific setup that he has. Again, far but not maximum range, stand roundhouse. V skill two, crouching medium punch into EX, Dan kick, just as a way to continue pressure. Uh, with plus frames. Again, the far distance on that, the sweep. Uh, you know, again, look, Dogra is playing Dalsum. He's like not anti airing. He doesn't really know the probably the Dalsum versus Dan matchup specifically. It's fine, but it's still a still a good one to look at, I think, because it's I guess it, it, Moroto gets to show off a lot of like what his character can do. And, and notice that it's not constantly V-Skill stuff, right? So this is like jab into fierce, uh, which is not a tight block string, obviously. That is plus three into 10 frame stand fierce. So this absolutely could have been interrupted. But, you know, hey, that's the name of the game, right? Like you're not going to be constantly doing V-Skill 2 stuff. That is a way to make the opponent sit still so that you get to start your party. All right, so he wins. From a certain range, Dan doesn't really have a whole lot to say. You know, he doesn't have air Dan kick in this game. His fireball takes a while to charge up. Uh, EX Dan kick doesn't go as far as in the last game. Like, he, you know, but once you're in this range, as you can see, man, he just gets to press buttons. By the way, smart that Dogra is blocking the Dan kick standing. Because if you block it crouching, it takes another frame or two for Dan to get there, which means it's going to be plus unblock more than otherwise it would be. Oh, stealing some turns in there. We'll go back and take a look at that. Canceling stuff on whiff, right? He didn't cancel there. No V skill 2 cancel. No V skill 2 cancel. Maybe looking for a V trigger to confirm, in fact. Okay. All right. All right. So let's go back and take a look at a couple of these things. This is, yeah, again, that range, kind of maximum light Dan kick range. Yep, that's going to be plus. After grab in the corner, if you do this again, that can be plus as well. There's a lot of time here where the opponent could have pressed a button. Like this could have been 
Dolgara waking up? Absolutely press a button, right? That would work. But if Dan had instead pressed Stand Fierce there as a meaty, that blows you up. It's some stuff to do. Yeah, no, I can't check the frame data live. Okay, that's something I don't want her to talk about sort of mid-screen here. Yeah, 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 this right here. Stan Roundhouse whiffs. I'm sorry, connects. He then does V-Skill 2 crouching jab. But why, right? So this is the kind of reverse beat thing that I was talking about before. Uh, Stan Roundhouse by itself is minus 4. If you cancel it into V-Skill 2 into a light, uh, it's, not, it's actually not more punishable. In fact, it's less. And this means, that, again, exact frame data kind of varies a little bit, but it's going to be less, and that's a type lock string if it's on block. And, and on whiff, you're, you're cool. So why, why do that there? Well, when you, when you do V-Skill 2, of course, you're, you're, you're building some V-meter. I guess he already has it here. But what you want to make sure that you're doing, above all, is partying. Has Dan, you are absolutely having a party as much as you can at all times. What do I mean by, mean by that? I want I want the opponent, if I'm Dan, to not know what's coming next. Most other characters in Street Fighter V have fairly predictable frame traps. When it comes to like which button they use when, stealing turns is a huge part of this game. You don't know which button is coming, but you know like what the frame traps are, right? You know what the traps are that mean that the opponent's gonna, ha gonna be able to beat a three framer or a four framer button, if you know the game very well. Now, that, that can then make you sit still for them to take a bigger turn, right? Again, you're not always going to be predictable. Nobody wants to be predictable. But as Dan, you have so many different options that you can really throw in some funky curveballs. And that's exactly what this is about right here. That was, so that's, this was plus enough that he got a crouching strong, actually. Oh, oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Never mind. Stand jab into crouching strong. Oh, no, hit confirm. Clearly what he was looking for there. Stand strong by itself is uh, is plus. Okay, blows up. So medium punch is six frames and plus three. So with that, you're going to blow up lights. Um, but right, you can see how much Dan gets to just press buttons. If you're somebody who likes to press buttons, this guy, in the context of Street Fighter V, when he gets in, right, to be specific, I don't think anybody does that better press buttons as you can see a lot of the stuff he's doing isn't very damaging he's got to get up close in the first place just doesn't really have much to say from range but if you get to where you want to be with this character you are pressing buttons more than anybody else okay that's a good challenge that's, that might have been a, a negative spot for light kick dan kick Okay, all right. Yep, spending the red bar on it. I like that. That was cool. Again, you can see Dogra is like not a expert Dalson player. He's trying to figure out the character, but again, I think it's useful to just let Moroto party so you can see what the character can do. Okay, not safe. Yep, yep. Oh, the whiff, but he still takes his turn. Wow. Dogra is flummoxed. Oh, nice. Oh, I thought he was going to get grab in time. If you do that ASAP, you can. You can throw a V-reversal. Okay, so those are plus. We'll go back and look at the frame data. I think plus four from point blank. So more plus there, probably. Oh, man. Well, what was that at the very end? This was crouching strong into Stan Ranos. Okay, that... That is a big stolen turn. Uh, that crouching strong is, I think, plus one. Yes, plus one. And Stan Ranos is a lot. Yeah, 13 frames. 13 frames. So that was a, that was a big stolen turn. What came right before that? Again, it's as the defender here. Like you, what you really have to look out for is not just knowing like which buttons, which sequences will make him plus. You know what will interrupt a three frame or a four framer, but also like when is he actually canceling V skill two? Of course, you can only do button into V skill two into button once. You can't do like button, V-Skill 2, button, V-Skill 2, button, V-Skill 2, button. That would be 
maybe a little bit too zany. So you really got to keep your eye on that. In this situation, he does, yeah, medium kick, canceled V skill two into crouching strong again, which is plus. But then he had been doing EX Dan kick off of this, and maybe that's what Dogra is expecting. So instead, it's Stan Roundhouse. That could be, could be, right? Again, you really got to be throwing curveballs in constantly against your opponents as Dan. Yeah, Dogra is just playing on CFN. Again, like this is just a, just a match ripped from CFN. So he's probably just like trying to learn the character, what the character does. And um, we just we just happen to be taking a look at it. He's definitely getting his butt kicked, but yeah, whatever. It's not that big of a deal. Oh man, you can't even do that. No V rev there. Oof, that's tough. Oh, punish. Ooh, could have. No big deal. Oh, yeah, okay. Cool, he did do it. That's what he was trying last round, I think. Oh, boy. Oh, that's going to be it, actually. Super? Yeah, yeah, All right, so that's it. Yeah, I mean, look, throughout that game, throughout those couple of games, you could see that Dogra didn't quite have the counters to these situations. We did see him backdash a couple of times to escape. We saw him try a V-reversal. We saw him try V-shift. V-shift worked a couple of times. V-reversal didn't really work. Backdash might have gotten him blown up at the end of the previous round, but it did escape from some stuff. So we saw him trying things out, and it wasn't super successful. Let's take a look now at the same Dan player, but versus Ryusei. And see what changes. Ryusei Urien, super, super strong. Very knowledgeable player. And using his main, unlike Dogura, who was just, you know, trying out Dawson. So backdash, right? Important to see right away, setting the tone that he kind of knows what's up. Get out of those situations. But oh, okay. So one of the main downsides of Visco to Dan is that it actually takes execution to be able to always cancel button into V skill two into button. Like that is, it's not free. There really is timing involved. Oh. Whew, man, he is stealing some turns in here. So roundhouse stand kick to make sure he gets pressure afterward. Wow. Okay. So very cognizant of EX headbutt, I think, is what's happening there. As Morto is very safe. He's not canceling a lot of this stuff. Oh, no cancel there. Wow. Oh, that's it. No, he could have killed with super. Oh, no, you're in trouble. Yeah. Okay, nice. So, look, we saw, I mean, some execution errors there from Haigadoken. That's a bummer. But we also saw that Ryusei, aware of some of these situations, actually backdash to escape right early on. That said, even he got stuck in this corner, knowledgeable as he is. And we'll see more about like him being knowledgeable and, and dealing well with some of these situations. But even he, with uh, V-Skill active? I don't think I realized that. This is, yeah, he got V-Skill active. Yeah, yeah. So he has armor even, if he wants. Even he got walked down. Right, look, he's not always canceling, right? Crouching strong, not always canceled into V-Skill too. You really got to let the opponent know that they can't be sure about what's coming. Cool series. Anyway, it ends up, as you saw, let's go back to the next round. Not seeing Mortal jump much, which makes sense. Urian has, in Crouching Strong, obviously really effective and Ultimately damaging and screen controlling anti air. Ooh. I don't think that was anything like a Visco 2 cancel, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Ha! 
God, look how much Ryusei is just blocking, right, at that range. Oh, here we go. Nice confirm. Mm -hmm. It's going to be minus. Wow, he actually went in. One one thing about V-Skill 2 Dan is that since you're doing V-Skill 2 so often, you do very often have more V-Meter than other characters will. Oh, we got the lucky one, but it wasn't quite there. Oh, that's plus. That was big plus. I'm surprised he didn't take more advantage of that. What a backdash, right? Escaping that situation? Okay, putting buttons out there. This actually might be knockdown. Yeah, good work. Oh, that was probably going to be plus on block anyway. And then the stand jab, my guess is he's looking out for V reversal there. Stand jab into grab would have worked uh, versus V reversal. Obviously, it's just a mix up anyway, right? Stand jab at the start is, what did we say? Plus, it's plus quite a bit. Yeah, plus three. So he's got he's got a lot of plus frames going on. And even somebody who clearly knows the match, like you say, he's still stuck there a lot of the time. Still just kind of blocking it out, looking for opportunities. Oh, wow, that worked. Okay. Oh no, the error. We've seen that a couple times this game, unusual. Oh, he's in trouble. Oh, yeah. Oh, he did do it. And, okay, there's, you see a nice benefit of Dan, the V reversal just escaping. Oh, wow. Okay, I r actually really like that. That EX right there, Dan was absolutely, you can see Morito charging it up. He was trying to fish for getting frame advantage. If you do like max range charged fireball, regular charged fireballs, I think plus four. If we go back to this data, yeah, yeah, plus four, uh, as you can see down there at the bottom left. So when you do it from further away, it's big plus. You really get to take your turn. So I love you say just getting in there with your super fast EX. So as opposed to where Dogoro was just kind of getting pushed into the corner constantly, he tried stuff out like V-reversal and, and V-shift. And you see that there's not quite as much like experimentation on Ryusei's side because he knows some of these situations, it seems to me, a little bit better. And that means that he's waiting for some moments. He had the crush counter stand fierce in the left side after waiting for a while in round one. Uh, he backdashed some situations. He didn't let the fireball charge up. Like he, he has some solutions to what Haigadoken is trying to do. Oh. Well, that is absolutely a couple of stolen turns. We'll go back and look at that. Aye, okay. Oh, wow. He pressed buttons. Was he just looking for the crashing short after or something? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, wow. Did he wake up with button? Let's see if we can see here. I mean, he obviously got a counter kit, but what? Was it crouching? Ah, I don't know. Probably crouching jab or something. So earlier... Yeah, this, right? So he has... I mean, this is obviously another difference between when we saw Dogra play with Awesome doesn't have anything invincible. Uh, well, nothing at attacks anyway. And in this situation, Ryusei does. Well, he will. There it is. EX is lined up. So, as, oh, dude, honestly, as soon as it came, he was ready for it. As soon as he had EX, he was looking for to bust out of that corner. Super nice. Anyway, that mix-ups happen. Okay. Ooh, I bet EX would punish that, but again, that roundhouse really leaves him far. Oh, what a backdash. Actually, super good by Moruto, though. We'll go back and take a look at that. Max range. Wow. I don't know if that was intentional, actually. <gasps> EX again? Oh. 
You know, what's interesting is how often High God Oaken looks for stuff that is maybe him fishing for Lucky Fireball. I don't know. Okay, that's just going to be plus, yeah. V-Trigger 2, Fireball. I think plus 4. Let's take a look at that dock. Yes, V-Trigger 2, God Oaken. Again, at point blank, is plus 4, but it's more than that from further away. Okay, let's go back and take a look. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a common situation. Stan, uh, Stan, what do you do? Stan Fierce cancel into it? Yeah, Stan Fierce cancel into it. You see Stan Roundhouse as well. But this leaves you at like real tippy range of the sweep. And Dan afterward um, is, uh, is there, right? I mean, you can certainly hit him with stuff, but he moves further away than many other characters do. And, you know, over the seasons in SF5, they kind of made it so that sweeps are really easily punishable. Like, you can, versus some characters, you could hit standing buttons and punish a sweep. Like, it's, the, the hurt boxes are significant. Dan doesn't really have that. And so I guess he was expecting that Dogra would, sorry, that uh, Ryusei would try to do something and he immediately sweeps. Okay, so that's, that's one thing I wanted to point out. Come on, encoding. Right, yeah, look at that. That's really nice. Yeah, yeah this, this. So, Ryusei backdashes. Really good idea. However, right away, look at this. They're both trying to press buttons so fast. Crouching medium kick got there first. How fast is that? I don't think it's particularly fast. It is seven frames. So it got there first, and he immediately, like, hit confirms. I mean, it's probably a situation, right? Like, you're, you see the opponent backdash, and you're like, okay, right away, into it. But, you know, that's a really good idea for Moroto to do, to blow up somebody who's trying to backdash to escape these situations, which... So you can see, um, you really don't want to be stuck in. Oh. <laughs> He's really fishing for it, although he has activation at this point. Yeah, there you go. Again, EX. Uh, you say has you really used the EX as well. All right. Oh, backdash again. That's going to be a plus for sure. Yeah. Okay, right. So EX Chariot does punish. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, crouching medium kick. Oh, we'll go back and look at that series. There are lots of little series like that. We've talked about a couple of them before, but there's one that leads to EX being plus. I think he probably missed DP there. Oh, what a challenge. That's plus for sure, yeah. Again, we see backdash. Oh no, he missed it, the error. That has cost him. Okay, so he's gonna get up close pressure after this. Oh, big plus, no. God, I love the ranges that he's doing those fireballs from, that's so smart. Look at the gray life. Oh my god. Wow. And it's super. Yo, that's this is exactly what I was hoping to see. What a party animal. Like, look at this sequence from Dan in the corner. Dude, doesn't that look like so much fun? Okay, so first of all. Run out stand kicks, right? And then he he blocks. I'm not super sure what he's looking for. Is he looking for a view reversal here? I don't really know. But, um, I mean, it can't be EX, I guess it could be if you shift as well, but it can't be EX headbutt because you're in just blocked standing. I don't know. In any case. So again, these, this range right here, notice as well, and this is not just graphical, Dan, he, he kind of moves backwards a little bit here. So I tested this when the character first came out. And um, there are sequences where if you're doing like V skill two pressure and then you cancel V skill two, sorry, button V skill two into fireball and hold it like this and you're kind of back like this, some characters' buttons that they want to poke with will actually whiff because he's, he's actually kind of moving backwards. 
Uh, we don't see that too often in this match, I guess, but that's something to keep an eye on. Again, really well spaced here. Look at this. Look at the gray life. Uh, again, this is V trigger two fireball. I think plus four. Yep, it's plus four. Again, from point blank, which is, I guess basically is where he is. Yeah. He he left one hole there just in case of ex. Because keep in mind, Risa had been doing exes. But look at this whole sequence. Oh my gosh. And it's chip as well, now that I think about it. It's not just gray damage. Like, he's doing specials in here. And that's a lot of chip, dude. Check out the chip damage on Fireball. You see this? That's actually a lot. Oh. That pressure is really unusual in Street Fighter V. That you get to keep it up in that kind of way. With V-Trigger activated, with V-Skill 2... Dan just has, like, longer pressure series than, well, anybody else. Now, I mean, there are, there are holes in here. You know, it's not, it's not, this isn't perfect stuff. So, Stan Fierce, right into the whiff cancel, into Stan Fierce again. Absolutely, you can press a button here. Absolutely, you can press a button here. Should you? That's the question, right? So at some point you're playing the same kind of frame trap that many characters can play, where they're trying to steal turns and you want to interrupt them. You guys basically know how Street Fighter V frame traps work. Well, that's very common in many fighting games. What's different for Dan is that with V Skill 2, and especially once V Trigger 2 is activated, he just gets a different spin on when he can press a button, when he can keep things going, when he's plus, which is usually. And that, yeah, he's he's a little party animal. Look at this guy going. Oh, this looks so fun. Ugh. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So, all right, let's, if you don't mind production, just let's head back to the press box. So that's a look at Dan, V School 2, Dan specifically in Street Fighter V. And his and his very different kind of pressure than many other characters can do. That looks good, you know. Even versus Ryusei, who clearly knew a little bit more about what was going on. He was using his main, unlike Dogra. He knew where to backdash. He actually got punished for backdashing into a button, right? We saw that happen. Uh, we saw him interrupt well a couple of times. We saw him EX through a couple of times, punish with EXs a couple of times. He like he knows what's up. That said, he still got walked back into the corner a lot. He still had a lot of gray life in a bunch of those rounds from Dan pressuring him. What's the problem, right? Like, why is it that not everybody's like V Skill 2 Dan so good? Uh, well, keep in mind that needing to press a lot of buttons, fun and good, but also a downside. Other characters can kill you in three hits, right? Think about it like this. If you're somebody else who has stuff stocked, right? You're like ready to start your own party. Say I, Honda, right? We're Honda. Honda needs to hit three times to take a round, you know? And Dan just doesn't have that luxury. So while other characters can um, do what they need to do in fewer hits, they also find a harder time to snowball with as many hits but they also like don't need to because they're doing damage whereas uh v skill 2 dan just kind of doesn't do that much damage very often and that means that you're seeing him hit a lot of buttons in part because the opponent's still alive to get hit by more buttons you know <laughs> so that's that's definitely a downside for him he doesn't have uh it's not a zoning fireball right he can't really counter zone he's kind of stuck at range uh, he actually does have some decent footsies, but they're not nearly as good as some other characters for sure. He doesn't have um, anything that alters his jump in. It's not like Street Fighter 4 where you could do light kick, Dan kick in the air. Like he doesn't, he doesn't have a three frame button on defense. So he is not, he's not a top tier character. But he's, I think as you can see, he's got such distinct pressure um, and pretty good movement speed, and not like no damage, just not great. Um, that nobody would say he's top tier. But I, I do think that he's a little bit underrated. I think he's a lot of fun. Importantly, for Dan, a lot of fun. Super interesting character. I, I love their design of Street Fighter V Dan. They're pretty good, too. All right. 
Uh, he does have to spend bar sometimes, for sure, on EX Dan Kick to continue pressure. I think that's true. You also have EX, of course, when you have... Uh, or when you want to do EX DP. But we did see a couple of supers, right, from Moruto. And I think that's an indication that he doesn't always need to be doing EXs. He could, he could steal turns in plenty of other ways. For other characters, stealing a turn means, you know, taking a big risk of their own their own dp or their own armored whatever that's unsafe on block dan doesn't his his interruptions are not really about that right they're more about like when you do v skill 2 and and when you're going to press a, another button than that ex part of it but it's not i don't think it's a super big part of it all right that's it again just gonna be a shorter episode of monday morning quarters back let's toss it down to david on the field all right, you got an overhead look of me on the field right there as that transition happened. That's pretty cool. Good job, camera work. That was pretty nice. You know, production hasn't screwed up at all today. Fantastic. I have been threatening each week to have everybody fired in production. Finally, I think my message has gotten across. Everything looks fine today. Thanks a lot to David upstairs for the expertise on Street Fighter V Dan. He does look like a lot of fun to play. Uh, I myself am a Mortal Kombat player. I don't play Street Fighter V at all. I've never touched the game. But for you, again, David upstairs in the press box over here, um, that looks like a, it's, a, it's a really good fit for you. All right. Thanks a lot to everybody for watching. Check out Street Fighter V Dan. He's a lot of fun. Have a good one. Hey, good job, production. All right. Hey, all right, everybody. Good job. All right.